afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from the host, Imperial Dane. Yes, of all the Danes, it's the Imperial one. Of here to a one versus one on a Samoski Winter. We shall be watching a Chewy here fighting for the United States of America with the airborne in tow. Taking up arms here for the 3rd Armored Division with the 82nd Airborne in support versus Woodlol fighting for Germany for the Reich who has gone for elite armor and fighting here for the 2nd SS Panzer Division Das Reich. There's some rather early play there with both commanders there. Interesting, interesting. Nice to see after somewhat recent having a bunch of players be a lot more passive with it so Interesting start up there, both players sort of rushing to either side, maybe making a bit of direct move on the fuel point. Of course we'll have to see, I mean the Germans will like to move towards this one as it's the shorter one, but also has the advantage in terms of mapping, particularly the army they're fighting. There's no building right next to it, which is in particular a bit dangerous over the American weapon, who are definitely one of the more supreme opponents inside a structure. In particular dealing with grenadiers out in the open, so generally you want sort of secure around here since there, while there's a building it's a lot harder to directly cover say compared to here where it's basically straight out the front door by the way Swedish launchers moving in pioneers moving up grenadiers are on the way lots of grenadiers so far here for Ooh, lol and by the way back to Chewie. this airborne there we go pioneers engaging the Swedish troops MP40s versus carbines Getting there with their schmeisers, and there we go, quick volley fire, though mind you, it actually makes them easier to hit. So Jenny, for example, I mean, it's not the most effective thing versus the Pioneers when they're already up your face. That's only going to make things easier for the Pioneers. So there we go, force are moving in. I mean, he's clearly already here, sort of figure out where it might be that Lol is aiming all of his forces towards. And of course, he's very much intent on disrupting the crap to attempt to get killed. They go up and change the Pioneers line of fire and range. And to a certain extent, while they can do something, they were already rather wounded there from the fighting misses of the rear on troops. And they go forced away, grenades are arriving from several sides. Can they cover up? Can they show the pioneers? Don't get turned into sacks of meat in the middle of the road. And there we go. He makes a run for it there. Grenades pulling up behind the sack. Heavy cover there. Grenades marking up there. If he can get up there, he can in fact ensure the units might not be able to get away. No, he closed in there. I think that could have been executed a bit better. Oh well. Either way, the rifle now forced away. No casualties to the Gunners. That's good. More men are moving in. Alternating in from the south. Gunners on the way there. So we're definitely seeing here some rather heavy fighting being engaged around the fuel point here. Though interesting enough, the Americans make no move towards here. So, so far the Germans are acting up with a slight fuel advantage. However, briefly, there we go. Sneaking up there. Just the Gunners pull away. Being attacked here from south side. Falls into cover. Already here, things are about to get ugly. And he probably won't have access to the stun grenades right away, which could have been used there to turn things, but there we go, focusing down one gunner squad at a time. Quick turning things around here for him. Rather ugly here for Mr. Woot Lol here in the face of Chewie. Third gunner squad could have moved up, but all here would be overnumbered. Powered and outnumbered. Force of enforcing MD42 arriving there for Woot Lol. No sign of the commander used so far here from uh, Chewie, though he could go for some pathfinders. Add some extra early firepower, particularly since they can also be used to finish off units beyond a certain threshold in terms of health. A sort of semi sniper ability, if you will. Which is not half bad in its own right. Watch that being secured. Rifleman, more rifleman. No taking up so far here from Chui. And there he goes, a king point there. Going to have to take some points from him. There we go. Pathfinders have arrived there with a combo of Carbine and M1 Garand. The scope's on there, I believe. Though I don't believe the Americans were so keen on using it for that. They generally prefer the Springfield for sniping purposes or marksman purposes. Technically, the Americans did not actually have much in terms of snipers. And the closer thing would have been marksmen, so I suppose that fits the build all the way. Pathfinders on the move here. MD4 is heading up to car one. Flank grenades arriving. And there goes time grenade up. Definitely giving those Americans a bit of a headache there. So they might quickly want to make a move to the fuel point. Recruit. One, one here being secured. 
Pathfinder is likely joining up soon. Also, of course, they do have the ability to set up beacons, which can be quite handy with airborne troops, amongst other things. Plus, also provides a bit of line of sight on the mini map. Allows you to spot things. But there you go, larger force moving in there, setting up to really catch us right from the low on health. And there we go. Jack went down. Might go tumbling down the hill if that was actually implemented in the game. But there you go, larger force moving up behind here. The MD14 needs to set up for that. And I think it's a bit overkill here, setting up two gun the squad to take that one. There's still a front line that needs to be protected here, so I think Rootlow might be a bit too eager there. I'll wear sort going in there. Rifleman almost wiped out there, going out in the open. Pathfinder's flying away there. MD42 joining in on the Rifleman. Does he need to be careful around the Pathfinders? Holding up here in the tall grass. And looks like a Rifleman. There we go! Taking out half the Pathfinders. They have found a path to somewhere in the next life, I imagine. And of course, it's going to up. Frack grenades up. Ambulance on the way. Very interesting. He is going for a very heavy initial tier here, Mr. Chewy. A bit rarer to see nowadays. Then again, there's still some times, I suppose, but still, usually you expect an early lieutenant. Said he's actually going rather heavy there on riflemen. Smoke grenades being sent in the direction of the MD crew. Good job there. Good job there. Good use of his abilities. I'd like to make a nice company up here for Wootlo, though at the same time, of course, this kind of heavy early tier could certainly give. Rootlow here, chance of striking back with an arm. Oh, the gun in his squad went down there. A bit too slow then, pulling back. A small victory there for Chewy. That's definitely going to hurt that early on. And certainly fuel-wise, I imagine Rootlow is hurting on to quite a bit. Ambulance taking the field. There we go. Another man went down here. The gun is holding up behind a tractor. Oh, there we go. Beacon actually set up. Although not very technically stealthy on the middle of the road. Part here and the reaction troops are running back home. Panzer Grenadier arriving here in the support of the second SS. The gun is need to retreat. Come on, Suruk Fan, you can't afford to lose that many that quickly. And looks like he's getting Gewehr for the Freeze himself. I would expect it LMGs. I mean, the Gewehr for the Freeze are all right themselves, but they don't quite project damage at the same ranges. Though they are cheaper, and certainly with the Veterans, they're pretty solid. But there we go. We do see a 251 half take out there. Mittlerschutz and Panzerwagen, or Hanno Mag. It was actually called by the Allied forces in reference to the fact that it was made by the Hanno Mag factories. Oh, Rav now, no one but the use of quick grenade, though they might get cut down there by the Gewehr for the Freeze. And there you go, another Yankee down there, another grenade off. And we got the path on his one get support, Enemies though they are quick to pop away. Ultimately not getting any flicks. And there you go, Panzer's arriving and spotting the beacon. A bit hard to not spot that kind of equipment in the middle of the bloody road. And there we go. Gonna do a bit better there, but half tech should be able to move things up and also certainly keep them a bit more on the field. Forcing up there once more the Pioneer. And looks like he's airdropping something and taking up at the same time going on to the captain and airdropping a heavy machine gun. Not a bad idea. I mean airborne can be used to sort of, you know. Give you some of the more help essential things or cheaper things from either of these these two so for example you could go for this and then skip this, but still have access to anti-tank guns as an example. Out of the way, there we go. Quick recruit there on the 50 caliber. And here's the force away by a larger rifleman force. Again, fighting for the fuel. Claims moving up there. And they could, of course, use the medic kit to heal. Rarely use ability, but nonetheless, it does exist. And. Ooh, that looks like what's happening. Yes, indeed. The gun is being healed on the front lines. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely that. Rarely seen. First gun is arriving. He could have gotten himself another Panzer gun escort, I suppose, an MD on mortar by our way. Looks like he's pulling towards the center, though at the same time he's immediately then leaving his fuel point utterly unguarded. That on the other hand might be a bit risky and might rather defeat the purpose and of fighting all that hard to get it. But we do see an American force going in there at the same time pushing up here through the village. Taking up pushing the church with the Panzer gun is not a bad idea. Half-track advancing, MP2. Gun is coming, following up there with a give out for the freeze. 
A quick rough grenade here could be good. Grenade's setting up position at the other side here. That could definitely cut them off there from the retreat, or at least make it a lot harder. Pacifist should get out, get out, close in. I mean, this is only one window. It's not really effective there to actually engage. There we go, grenade. There we go, popping out. Bits to slow their field. And there we go, rifle squad wiped out, attacking here from the rear. MP4 to in trouble, half technique to pull back. Captain joining in as well. Quickly getting one of the guns, they need to fall back. So Luke Fun Panzer is fighting as well. Half tech needs to fall a bit further back here, move away. In particular, away from the captain and posse. With all the bazookas. And there we go, one hit down the half tech on the handle mag. Panzer is getting suppressed here by the 50 cal, but really laying it in thickly. Moving into the cemetery, apparently already feeling death come. A sense of impending doom. Well, for some reason, the driver's drunk. Hard to say. Quick rub grenade, they just put much stuff there. Captain and the rifle squad, they're close, getting wiped out. Canadians holding up nicely in the chest with the Air 40 Feast, shooting wherever they can. And a quick stun grenade now, that should help cover up a retreat. In the entire unit there, suppressed for a brief moment while the guys holding up things as well. A rather desperate stand here enacted by the German troops, but the half check ensures it's all kept together, ensuring they don't necessarily have to quit ground, to ground to quit, but there we go. And Pathfinder's unit up, that could definitely turn things against the Germans if they're not too careful alongside that 50 caliber. And you've got two days from up, Pioneers going up to repair the half tank, that's definitely needed. And we are seeing Browning automatics on the way here for Chewie and his men. Definitely a less than usual sort of a strategy we're seeing from him, though not necessarily bad. But certainly not what I'm seeing a lot of as of late. MD41 to take up in the church here. They're already there taking quite a hammering from the 50 caliber, having little trouble there with the wooden walls. The Pathfinders there also getting in a few kills there. With their remarkable marksmanship skills and gaining veterancy too. Nasty work there. Granade is falling back. MD4 is sitting up. Granade is also here. But at the same time, with the half tack, he can form a slightly more effective defense in the village. And there you go, trying to get back that fuel pond, that's good. Again, I mean, overall, well, there's some bit of issue in the fuel department. This is the constant harassment. And there you go, grenade stuns almost. Oh, right from actually, that's quite impressively thrown. Pathfinder's flanking up there, good job going for the victory point. Up the pressure is increasing on the Wehrmacht. And you probably need to fall back here. Captain, lots of rifle in the Brownings. But Panzer Gunners and Gunners moving up there. This is definitely going to be a bit quite of a fight. All the Gunners now, by the way, are veteran T2 there with the Gavir 40 Fees. Panzer is joining in. Stun Grenade here could go off and stop off the rifle. Now half check joining MD42. Pointing into the wrong direction. Dieter, we need to point it at the enemy. Gunners out in the open. Grenades going off. Not looking good. Looking dangerous. Looking dangerous. The MD42 continues to point in the wrong direction. It's the right direction, Dieter. It's the right. And the guys say, ah, shite, a stun grenade, but a bit of a reckless sacrifice there. The man's just done up quite a few yanks there. And the other things are available. 50 cal lot of troops, they're caught out in the open. Still reinforcing, still finding. Half check, actually getting off. Quite a few kills there. Wonderful job there in the Narmesis Deutschland. Bazooka, though, close to taking out another captain and friends. Ever the obstacle here. Though the captain seems to have been in need of a replacement. But there you go, the half check finally went down. Still a lot of troops to fall back to 50 caliber joining in the retreat here. Captain and Pathfinders quickly evacuating the scene. Being behind only a suppressed 50 caliber, which really gonna help people to do a bit of good work against. So rather nasty engaging, a lot of bleeding out on both sides in the end, though he still held the ground, though at a noticeable cost. Now the question is, can he take advantage of the ground he's sort of held at the same time regional troops are making a mess out of things on the left flank while well, he's getting things over here though, so not all bad. Pack ready, he could consider taking up. That's an option for sure. Troops rebuilding, forces removing, and we've also got another beacon up here for Chewie. He likes his beacons. Another gun unit on the way, and there go the rear saloon units. Remember, they have better places to be, places where there aren't Germans with assault rifles. Pioneer's in a bit of a lone walk. He could have considered, by the way, mining this fuel pump with some S-mines. I think that would have done quite well. Just a thought, anyways. We have taken 
Bit of quad here. Our opponents are seizing a sector. Noting by the way, he's only upgraded each rifle squad with only one browning. If he's got more than that, if he's gotten any at all. Looks like he's hitting up for an assault from here. Good. He's not just going to bar bash his way in from the head on always. And we are him on to the major armor soon to be inbound for the Americans. Medic station up here. That's going to help Wootlow a bit. That he might want to consider taking up. He's got the resources for it. Now he's getting another half track. That could certainly help him continue keeping things up here going. Though taking up and take getting a Panzer for some storm gets you might also prove advantageous by now. A bit worried about flanking here. Gonna lose actually a bit of watchman there and there. Moving up he's still he's very persistent when it comes to the gear for the phase. Less interested it seems in light machine guns, which I do think could find a bit of support besides the gear for the phase, but there you go, assault flank up here. Stop quickly. Because it take quite a bit of a punishing. Down to two men already. Quick sun green here, so they can only stop where the Yankees are, and there we go. Stunned. And a stunning maneuver. And there you go, forced to abandon the village, finally after fought so hard and bled so much blood. Wootlow gets out of there. Really should consider taking up, but oh well. I digress. I imagine his opponent might soon hit with something armoured and nasty. Pack there close to taking a bit of a hit there from Basuka and maybe sinking towards the, the enemy has depths. The in our lines. That's it. Fully there we go. Ready to counter attack in the name of the Reich. And Das Reich. Mega Pioneers Watchboard versus the Eternal Arch Nemesis, the re echelon troops. Inch enough, he's not moving here. I'm, I think he pushed forwards with this, but apparently seems to be more in a parade formation mood. This time a bit more volley fire. This time, though, the Pioneers are not getting close. They should stand a slightly better chance there. But there go Counter Attack Marine, Captain and Rifleman in tow. And there you go, finally got this going. And there we go, looks like some armor is very much in the move here for Chewy. At the same time the rifle not or the gun is also on the move here, rifle needs to be careful. Quite a few shots there. Another rifle unit moves up. And finds itself in risk of being cut down. And the 50 caliber quickly sets up there as well. That's going to catch a lot of the gunners out in the open. He needs to flank. He's got the pants goes half track. He needs to move up and hit them from behind. Taking up finally done, by the way. So far, my court cook up rather rapidly, and that might be an idea. Very at focused efforts there from Wootlaw to a certain extent. He's not spreading out too thinly, which is. Definitely going to go veterans you free for the Pathfinders, which amongst other things actually increases their weapon range. But there you go, small unit being sent him to flank up out. Good, good. I do take it quickly there from the Pathfinders rifle moving as well. Heavy loss there to the gun it is, Bazooka shots 50 caliber fire, all quite the hazard. And we're noting here an M8A1 Howard has arrived for Chewie. Units pushing forward as best as they can. Better is for these gunners, that's definitely going to help. That's definitely going to make them only more lethal there, but they can be able to freeze. Pants goes across the way. All the Indy 42 clubs going down. Interesting enough, there's been no use of incendiary armor, because you now sort of really further increase the lethality there. On the MD 42, always something I would recommend wherever possible. Since the MD 42 strongly benefits from these. And another push here for the victory point might draw away some troops from the actual fight. Support core up, he could either aim for a Panzer IV, maybe a Stug, both options are viable. He could also go for a flat Panzer, I suppose, but considering he doesn't know what his opponent has, of course, he hasn't seen any sort of vehicles for some time, he should be a bit cautious about that, at least in my opinion. And of course, we know that he's got his opponent's got an M8 Scott at the moment. So 
Looks like he's shifting forces towards there. Good, good. Kind of find this level on health. Now numbers going right from as well. Level going is almost wiped out. And there you go. The Pathfinders finish them off. Good job there by the Pathfinders. Showing the skill. As forward trips for the airborne sort of clear up landing zones and whatnot. Half track pushing forward with the machine gun on top. And there you go, the great Scott joins in with a 75 meter howitzer. Back to Chewie here. The 50 caliber continues to be quite the nuisance. And turning coursing. Ooh, we'll hear a bit of trouble. And there you go, the half track actually in front of this M8 rather realizing. Ah, Scheiße! Get away! Get away! Before we're blown to beats! A rather close call there. We go Vetri 2 and the MD42 Vetri 2 itself as well. Retreat. He's got lots of beacons up here. It seems he's very intent on ensuring that he's aware of something. Or at least this airborne, how very a bit <laughs> proper place to land in. And there go Jackson's joining and he's not getting Germans, he's just focusing more on the specialists, the M8 and the Jackson tank destroyers. No sign of any Panzers yet for Woodlull. Yet any of A's. Crowds are snipping around our asses. Tactical point being captured. Armor ready. Rounds complete. Hold fire. But considering how much armor his opponent has, I mean, Chu might be going a bit too much over in the other extreme, and rather missing an opportunity to sort of really push his opponent with, say, instead using two Shermans. Of course, that is merely my opinion. Since the Jacksons aren't necessarily that great at pushing forwards and assault with versus infantry only. There you go, 90 minute gun firing away. Pushing up towards here, some minor harassment if they're quick to give up the village. Not necessarily a bad idea, though he might want to sort of focus a bit more on the fuel pumps. Looks like finding some armor is on the way. Interesting enough, there's been no use of the paratroopers here by. Mr. Chewy, that's a bit surprising. Usually, I mean, you'd see players go specifically for the pair troops, but so far he seems more frightfully interesting. And oh dear, the gun is rather went down there rapidly. I saw going in here, 50 cal, but once more proving to be quite the obstacle. And putting a bit of stop there to the Panzer gun that is marauding. Tank destroyer is ready for order. There you go, Panzer Kampfang für arrives. Kruppstahl. Such. Though a bit under gun compared to the Jacksons and certainly outnumbered. AT gun ready. Another bit of smoke there, good job by Chewy. Though that probably won't help much versus the Panzerkampfwagen fear. Determined to crush some Yankees. In particular, get a Pintaman machine gun on top. There you go, Jackson moving up. Shot fired and not quite connecting. Right there, close going down. No anti-tank rifle. In fact, looks like you saw you fired it, but rather failed to hit something. Either way, too late. And there you go, Jackson moving ahead, coming out of fire. Panther 4 taking a hit, pack firing. There you go, Jackson needs to get away. For the Panther, we can own it. Oh, knocks it out. There we go. Fuel cooked off. Leaning the entire thing, a huge smoldering wreck. And getting the pack gun is something to brag about. Infantry needs to go ahead to the half second in for Schnell. Send your mission. Amen. Stand by. Stand by. Orders. Not being an idea to sort of try and recapture this fuel point as quickly as possible. Enemy Leading with a half track, not a bad idea since the Pathfinders can't do anything versus that. Also, by the way, it actually looks like he's upgraded with a BR to further increase the vitality. Neat move there, Captain good for the cut point, good job there, since all the folks up here he realises quickly there's a good chance of further disrupting things here for Wootlaw. Well executed there, well executed. The course question is how quickly will he respond, and there you go, a panzer come back and already mobilised. And firing away there with 75 meter high shots around. And the pressure from the side looks like he's gunned himself an anti-tank gun. 
not going to do much versus the infantry, but nonetheless flying away with quite the enthusiasm. Still no sign of airborne, I'm again a bit surprised by that, a bit surprised. Looks like the theft cover here will be out of trouble. Jack oh, Scott here moving in and directly in front of the pack four. Oh, what of the Panzer de Canone. And another one joins the ranks of the dead, in fact, right next to the other one. So very close to Vetsu 3 now, that's definitely going to be a headache. I need to sort of push up from there, I mean he's overall hanging at the top, sort of gaining any territory and holding it for long. Overall he's ensuring his opponent has a lot of fuel. In fact currently Chu has more than twice as much fuel income. They should be able to use one opponent on that loop while Chu has calling another Panzer of five so fancies. On the other hand, considering the command points, a Tiger Ray should also be an, an option. Another smoke grenade here to obfuscate the MD-42, good job there. Following on the grenade handling the ears, lovely combo, lovely combo. So there's a quick rub grenade into the ditch which apparently makes about as much impression as they'd fire a water balloon. Stun grenade follows up to sort of maybe do the job there but doesn't quite make much of an impression either. Pioneer charging in there into the smoke though. Recklessly, there we go, Browning's dropping left line, looks like a wrapping unit wiped out. A great victory for the Reich, and a bit of free equipment for the Reich as well. Schnell, Dieter, we can get ourselves a Leipzig machine gewehr. Albeit not quite as cool as the ones we have. But there we go, a bit more fire here for the Reich. To certainly help them a bit, in particular with Etchen 3 and Gewehr 43, they'll definitely be able to lay down a lot of fire now versus the Amerikanen. Still another BAR, but they probably can't pick it up. He needs someone else to do it. He could get the Pioneers, the Panzer Gunners, or the other Gunners here to do the job. And of course, there's still also the option of eventually getting an ace. Another Jackson out here. Again, be ever cautious around your opponents. Panzer up their Kanone. That thing can very quickly turn your tanks into scrap. Which, by the way, is rather the design intent, obviously. There you go, moving everything forward. The captain leading the effort here. Pathfinders finding a path straight into enemy fire. You know, Jack, we might want to find another path. You know, I think you're right, Tom. There you go, he's moving up close. Quick stun going here, BR fire up close as well. He's going to end up falling back here in the face of this. But a nice idea to buy the upgrade the Pathfinders again. That's one of the unique abilities of the Americans. They largely upgrade all infantry with whatever weapons they want. And again, some, not all players sort of actually realize and do. They could, for example, also stand to upgrade his reaction on troops, maybe some bazooka or something. But Airborne finally called in his assist. Panzer for holding up the front line here versus the captain. Bazooka's firing. Not quite connecting or penetrating. There go Jackson, 5 pack 40 firing back. Captain almost wiping out. Empty 50 cal moving up. Another Jackson moving up, but on the ice though. Oh, see, it looks like the ace is about to call in. The SS calling upon one of the best. SS Cruz. There we go. The Tiger Ace is here. Have no fear. If you're German, if you're American, you might want to shit your pants now. Or maybe not, I don't know. There you go. Ace rolling forwards. Veterans of the Eastern Front. Normandy. Maybe Italy. Who knows? Jackson rolling forwards. And there you go, the ace reveals itself with a nice big whiff of a shot. Falls up with another miss. And another miss, that's just spectacular. Still nonetheless, now Chewie has to be a bit more careful around his opponent. There you go, shots versus off the Tiger Ace there. Nice hit there versus the Jackson though. Finally getting something hit. About time. But that was definitely one of the less spectacular sort of fast hand impressions there from a Tiger race. I guess the crew had been celebrating their victory a bit too early. They got quick rough neighbors, the, the Pathfinders, the Pathfinders really. Oh, they got murdered! And then the got them a BLF left behind, but still, they actually done pretty impressive with the Browning there. And looks like the Germans about to scoop up some more free equipment, courtesy of Uncle Sam. The enemy is 
spawning one of our capture points. Might want to get the half truck up there to help troops reinforce and pursue the pioneers so they can repair the ace faster. Schnell! Mach schnell! And back here to Wood Lol, by the way, the match is so long there won't be a mid game announced, though. Quick sort of look at damage and kills actually reveals it's extremely close here. Extremely close. This is definitely going to be a bit of a humding of a fight, certainly. Heavy tanks or oh, tank destroyers reinforcing, repairing. Forces moving up. Airborne with their browning light machine guns. No BARs for them. The only bars they carry around are chocolate bars. Ha ha ha. And they're moving in without armor support. And that's a bad idea when there's a Tiger Ace around, since that thing is also reasonably speedy, since the Tiger Ace was, in fact, surprisingly mobile. Which is what a lot of people seem to forget about the Tiger tank, that it was actually quite nimble. In fact, it could turn on the spot rather rapidly. In fact, it only took seconds. Driving forward, and there you go, the Tiger is finally gets off some kills. Good shooting, Heinz. It just took you five shots. That's for joining in there. The Sukas and the tank are moving up. AC good careful there, the rear is exposed, the rear is exposed. Pack 40 cleared out. Capture about to get wiped out. And the tank goes down. Airborne hanging about there. Pants Falcon moving clear them out. With a few good shots. And the tank trying there versus the ace. Turning the front armor. Good, good. Shots fired there. Shotman to penetrate though. That's less good. Pants Falcon could track versus the airborne. Get some good kills there. Get some more veterans. See what's waste there. Or he could of course do this and pull back the Pants Falcon to the base and train it. I mean, so far the only ability he has been using is troop training, and it's certainly one that's a bit, a bit, feel a bit neglected actually in the elite troops commander. It can be used for example, just get a bit more out of the units you already have on the field. Guys are about to get wiped out. Nine gets some out of there. No reason to waste such valuable equipment and veterancy. There you go. Very, very, very lucky Grenadiers, apparently. Alright, Ace moving up there, crewing the pack 40. A few upon this really secure though. He's really careful around the Ace, and certainly he needs to pull away from others. I mean, he's not going to succeed, I think, with a head on assault here with the pack 40 and the Ace covering that. I mean, any sort of direct armored assault here is going to be suicide unless they get laid down one hell of a smoke screen. Or something else, he would better off actually trying to flank the ace. Then again, a suggestion would be pull this back to the base, train it up, and then repair it. Apparently, someone just cracked a nut. That's quite unpleasant. I don't think they're talking walnuts. By the way, more airborne joining in, apparently the 82nd seconds sort of now ordered to relieve some of the 3rd Armoured Division's infantry. Having a little trouble here. Tiger Ace so quickly home up there with another salvo. And there we go, now we're beginning to pop those Americans like balloons. Enemy forces are securing getting up some good kills, and there we go, airstrike going in. The United States Air Force have been given a target. Can they strike? Can they kill? Can they murder? Rockets away! Shack destroyed! Tiger Ace taking there, quite a heavy strike there. For once, the United States Air Force hits its mark. Which it didn't always, actually. But there you go, none less heavy yards is there for the Americans. But half back down, pack down, airborne though, murdered. They're still keeping up the fire here. Ace going close, going down, basically, with the Panther 4. Jackson's in a nasty condition as well. Anti tank and almost gone. Cleared out. All of the armor here is basically holding on desperately for dear life. One Jackson down. And there we go, the ace went down, the ace went down. Panther 4 got the... Only it gets what... He's going to wait, get away. Oh no, it's around the pack. 49! Get away, get away! Careful, 4 six. Oh no, it's stuck on a tree! And the last shot there gets it before the American runs like the coward he is. We have lost a panzer. I don't think he'll be caught. Also, I'm pretty sure the Germans wouldn't do nice things to him. Get back here and face your deaths like a man. Ah, there you are, a problem. But uh, anyways, that was really an apocalyptic fight there. Both sides seem to be rather heavily bruised. 
barely any infantry left for any side of anything. It seems like Chu here is a bit better off for the time being. Sending with more sort of tougher troops. But at the same time, Wootlol has got the more experienced men, probably also a bit better equipped. Probably because he pilfered all that equipment from the Americans. Well, that was definitely some nasty fighting there. Of course, the heart ambulance also, but even then, they could reinforce thanks to the beacons against some people. Get here, but there we go. Doing the best of fight here versus the airborne. But simply can't master enough firepower. They need the help from the other gun at the escort. I stun grenade. There we go. Ooh, to snuff armies. Another panzer falling there, another panzer come fighting fit. I have to replace the ones lost. Certainly a bit of a rarity fight here. We actually saw Tag Race go down. And the game isn't over. <laughs> Certainly that was one of those rare occasions where the airstrike really did its job. I mean, once those rocket hits, they can actually do a lot of damage. Which certainly also makes it a lot more useful than the German equivalent. But there you go, Pantafort charging hit Pinnacle Machine Gun, they're airborne quickly. Bugging out, and apparently they're about to bug out of life as well. Down to one man there. Bet 22, browning in his hands. Pantafort on his tail. <laughs> Squad is no longer a threat. Yeah, so not breathing anymore. Pantafort is there for a retreat, airborne advancing. Carbines singing into the air. The and we got the captain and friends top. still lugging around the bazooka, saying great territory. He's definitely trying to get as much territory as possible. Good, though he's probably a bit caught unawares by the rapid response here from the rest of the panzers. We could see, soon see another panda for the move, although some stronger shots. And these kind of, in particular, these ones have certainly earned themselves an iron cross at the very least. Also, if they could pick up this Browning, that would definitely help them as well. Some more MTs, the better. And the Waffen SS were certainly fond of grabbing as many machine guns and other automatic weapons as they could. Another beacon down. You know, I wonder what they send from those beacons. Maybe jazz. Ugh, I hate jazz. I prefer a good amount of Wagner. And there we go, finally getting some Shermans up by now. Probably a bit late, though. Probably a bit late. Another Panther on the way. He should consider replacing some of those infantry losses, though. Gun is a bit on there, and they're 50 cover. Continuing to sort of be recruited and picked up and pointed at crowds. Quick rough grenade here. Um, and there we go. Actually got them. Hooray. And then the Sherman got Heinz. Mm, bit risky there, bit risky there. If the high close rounds, that could have been very quickly been a ditch turned into a grave. But anyway, the Panzer Force, he should have a bit of a uh, chance of striking back to my cannon. So he... Oh, there we go. Grenade from the airborne. The Sherman engine off is not quite keen on getting the Panzer, particularly the damage engine. And there you go, the rear and troops grabs a browning there. Well, that's meant for the airborne. But they might want to consider getting out of there before they end up like his previous owners. And there you go, second part to come back for arriving there. Certainly some nasty fighting here. You might want to consider getting out some troops. Sort of help things out, or at least another Sherman or a Jackson to support the Sherman. Because things are definitely not going to get any easier. Point for replacing the losses. Good job there by Wootlol. And the Panzer Force seems to be supporting sort of the main pushes going on at the moment. That's also good. Of course, at the same time, we can risk each Panzer Force now currently separate to be overwhelmed and knocked out in short order if he's not careful. And of course, with the elite troops, he does have access here to Panzer Titian and a chance of escaping the Ras of the United States of America. Sherman rolling forward. Kind of just realizing a wooden cart is not much of a defense versus a high explosive round. Another Panzerfaust that goes off. Panzerfaust hiking in. 
Misses. It's a dirt splendid knee, but the dirt is not what's firing at the gun of the ears. And there you go, coming in a but the Jackson gets off a good hit as well. Captain joining as well as the people who shot the needs to get away. Back off. Looks like Ivan Pioneers will be need to quickly repair that Panzer IV. Could also afterwards recruit that pack. Panzer and their canone. And their grenades were wiped out. Oh no. Well, at least not the bit. Oh, oh, he's actually been training up some. That's good. But he sadly lost the ones with the one of the ones with the BER. He still got the 38 kill squad though. He's actually making good use of the ability now. That's good. That's good. That's what we like to see. We have some troops there. Took the very wrong path to retreat to. 40 kills. You know, after this battle over, maybe he can get a knight's cross. And there are maybe not arrived. But there you go, more Pathfinders in the way. Nice to see that. I mean, I do feel it's a rather underappreciated unit amongst the Americans, but generally they can actually do so sort of quite well in supporting other units with the ability to sort of pick off any men below a certain amount of health. I believe it's 40% or 33%. So you go, fresh pioneer. 50 cal could do with the recruiting. And there you go, Vet 22 adding in a fifth member to the unit. Nice hit there from the Sherman. And also noting here the anti tank gun has been seized away. He's actually using this one instead of the Pack 40. They're supposed to be wanting to use this veteran's ability, that's not a bad idea. Since take aim is a rather solid veteran's ability and one I feel is sadly neglected at times. But over to Chewy here. Sherman repaired. We just want to be careful. Come in the front of the Panther and the Panther gun is joining in. And looks like he's all got these Pathfinders upgraded. With a quick VAR. Not bad, not bad. Captain Jolinga flanking in there from the church. They got the 50. Oh, well, the anti tank gun crew. Stun grenade there, but they did not enter the church there. So, a bit of a, how should one say, little trick there played upon. Boot roll, a little faint. Making it look like he's entering the building, but not doing so, causing him to lock the build grenade into the building instead by pure reaction. Noting, by the way, they're no high close rounds. So, less effective against infantry, though. Less effective. They're not completely useless. But generally, when you're dealing with infantry with the Sherman, you really want to use those high special rounds. They're absolutely devastating. And it looks like he might be saving up for another strike here from the P-47. Apparently not quite intent on aiming for something like... Say some light machine guns here for the airborne. He will need to replenish his losses rather rapidly in the infantry department. And certainly getting some more armor would be an idea. Pack 41, oh, not the Pack 40, the M1 getting recruited here. And they're going to get one of the Panzer IVs. Needs to be careful, needs to be careful. Interesting enough, he's using the Jackson in a way that rather negates its range. Singing the most out of it. And ultimately forced to pull it back again. Another unit wiped out. Oh, he lost the airborne. That's just terrible. She really needs to rebuild the infantry now. That really has to be a top priority. He's down to captain some pathfinders and re echelon troops. That's not exactly a sound infantry force to be fighting with. And we're seeing here a third Panzer for arriving. Wood on the other hand having less issues building up his force. Looks like he's finally shifting the hitchhikes for the rounds. M1, the hand gun stop hitting, and there you go, and it's almost wiped out. Almost. And there you go, veterans you want, will he use? Take aim. Sadly, apparently not. Again, very powerful ability though. Basically increases the range of the gun and the light of sight track to match it. They then can't see anything beyond the firing cone, but still, it's pretty damn handy. In fact, I'd say probably ranges about being handy as the target weak point from the Pack 40. They're not necessarily for the same reasons, though at the same time it gets essentially a bit to increase the penetration on this thing, so overall sort of adds up. But certainly if he used to take aim, he could actually fire at the Sherman right now with ease. 
Pan Man's stealing an MP4 turn, there you go, Hector Jones taking out some of the Panthers and the MP4 to finish you off the rest. Quick grenade. Oh god, the entire MG unit, the Sherman Force fall back here, and Bet 22 for the anti tank gun, increasing the rate of fire, I believe. No, accuracy and ability. Well, rather seems like he's sort of trying to sort of attack this position head on. It's not necessarily going to be the best idea. But certainly not with the Jacksons and certainly not the terrain. He'd be better off if he actually tried to flank from around here and then sort of sneak up behind, attacking the anti tanks, also the Panzers from behind, thus avoiding heading on the anti tank guns head on, which is really what he wants to avoid. Incoming. Or he could even sort of just try to drive around here. I mean, there are a few options sort of how he can approach this. Though either way, he should not be attacking head on since the Panzer force and the anti tank guns. Well, can decimate his forces, you just noted it there. And this Jackson almost got blown up already. And we're also noting a command bunker set up, so Wootlaw is digging in here by the road junction, setting up a definite sphere punk here, anti tank guns, infantry panzers, all sort of covering things here, all efforts going from out in between now with the command bunker. This is where all things will be directed from, where all attacks, all defenses will be coordinated from. Now it's also covering an approach here. Good job, good job. No power waiting time again. So tank guns cover from different angles, covers not versatility. It also ensures there's less blind angles, for example. So right now, Chu is in a bit of a nasty situation. I mean, his opponent's almost down. He could, of course, try and rush in here. Could, for example, call in some airborne behind here. That's one trick. Of course, apart we say you need to sort of try and switch towards Earth again, an attack from another angle would very much benefit him now, and probably is what he should be aiming for. Holds it up here, P-47 rocket strafe is available, and certainly if you can launch an attack from here, catching his opponent in a bit of chaos, then then follow up with a rocket strike, that could do a lot of damage then to Wootlaw and the second SS. Rifle now arriving, Nega going for the cut point. Straight for the victory point to add pressure to Chewy. In fact, might try to force his hand and force him to get a few more mistakes. And so, you know, again, feel under more pressure than already is. And the reason Chewy's about to get a lesson in why they aren't that great. Ooh, these Panthers are about to get a nasty surprise here. M8 and the terminal high flash around. But it seems like they got lucky this time around. Slowly sneaking up. But well, still very much attempt on the direct route versus Wootlol. Jackson here operational, should get Good to go. moving. There we go, shooting up with it. Right, I mean, I suppose you could use that sort of push up head on. I mean, then it's going to be a bit of a dangerous measure. But he's still going to be charging straight on into a line. And certainly where everything is going to be pointed towards this part. I mean, the best he can do sort of is again attack from elsewhere, sort of isolating components for a brief moment, allowing him to gain momentary superiority. And that was There we go, anti tank it opening up. Bet you free now, in fact. Rootlaw very heavily locking down the village. Making good work of that. I've been moving forward, so he seems very determined on the head on approach. And we got a fourth Panzer IV on the way here. This is really building up some heavy armoured fighting. And the Ravnir right coming under heavy fire. And several Panzer IVs I'm not going to be as well. 43 kills by the way on these E veterans. Jackson's firing around every single angle they can fire. And veterans won by the way. But that's not really going to do be needed versus these Panzer IVs. They will pretty much penetrate no matter the range unless they gain veterans in two. And so far, Bootlock seems not interested in actually training them up for that. But a second turning around there, more armor. Still very little infantry. Very little infantry. But rather seems like Chewie has lost any panache, any daring do. So whatever you know, and just assault as a much more unimaginative head-on assault tactics. Or he just kind of seems more like a creeping approach tactic. And strategy. More of these, he's basically sort of trying to scout its opponent without having to necessarily risk too much. And there you go, pack 40 spotted. 
And there you go. Oh! Oh! He snuck up. He caught the crew repairing the Sherman. Sherman there secured. Trying to get it away. He needs to fire the smoke though. Smile. Oh! Never mind then. He was a bit too late there. He should have popped the smoke immediately on it. Laid down a smoke screen, then reversed out. Sadly though, he was a bit too keen there, but either way. Nonetheless, a daring raid they enacted by the Panzer Gunner. He is leaving his chairman smoking. And a lot of crewmen dead. Very nicely done there by Wootlol. So he probably threw Chewie there more off his rails. And looks like some armies actually shifted the north there. And they're going to the airborne strike. Another P-47 strafing run. Panzer 4 there down to half health. Shots going off here. Jackson taking hits from the pack 40. Another pass. Or not. And he's searching for more targets. More artillery fire. Wonder what it's planning. Rich Scott there needs to be careful. There you go, another volley there versus the Panzer IV. And they missed this somewhere. I mean, that's a bit the problem. Even if the unit targets are still, it can end up missing with a lot of the rockets. In this case, it went down. Oh, weird, yeah, that was a bit bloody close. Looks like the Sherman's moving in from the rear there, though sadly only one. He's almost ready to call in another shot. And there you go, Panzer IV down. Jackson on the ice, though. Jackson on the ice. Careful, it doesn't get sunk. Keep moving, keep moving! No! And apparently the crewman got a very nice trip there. Scott continues to fire and hopes to catch in the pack 40. Noting a medic bunker up here as well, so really now it's forward defensive position here by Woot Lol. And again, just trying to wear it down, but sadly not having any as much success as he's with it. Wherever he can call in the ice. Probably a bit of a tricky landing, if anything. So not something I'd like to try. For well, the assault here for two teams have stalled utterly over to Root Lol, who's now looking much stronger than he did early on. Almost right up there. And now with two M8. Slow launching barges, but the Panzer IV still proving to be quite the obstacle alongside the anti tank guns. And he's arriving there, and the 44 kills now. Panzer IV joining in, volleying away there at the airborne infantry. In fact, they need to get out of there. And they got murdered. And this is always there, they literally finished all those weapons, doing quite a good job. A Scott there, abandoned. Those Panzer is definitely doing quite a good job at murdering crews. Looks like another P-47 strafe there, but can't see anything, so apparently can't do anything. Or maybe it already fired a miss, I don't know. There we go, rockets fired. Bit of damage there, not quite as much as one might have liked. At least not on the first pass. Very much things have stalled here for Chewy, yet he's still keeping at it. Of course, his opponent's still down 67 victory points, but his points are ticking down as well. You need something? And. Oh, we got the M8! So, in this case, this tank busting run and the end up wrecking one of his own. Still no take aim though. In fact, I think we'd actually hit some things here if he went for it. Oh well. By the way, Woodall seems awfully passive. He probably doesn't feel too confident for some reason. But just feels like he just needs to hold out. Doesn't want to risk actually things. I mean, again, I mean, another problem is he's actually missing out an opportunity to just harass the victory point out. He actually needs to draw him out, but again, he isn't. He's allowing Woodall to basically dig in around the center victory point and just hold it. So again, rather seems like Chewie is running out of steam here by the later game, mentally anyways. And he's still got the will, but he seems to be lacking the imagination to really do something with it. 
which is Earl Rowe leaving Root Lord with a much stronger hand and basically allowing Root Lord to sort of kick back a bit with a large panther force. So at the same time, if you watch Active Counter Attack, I think it would actually currently wipe out Chewie. And he's got four panther force, and two of them are veterans who won. This force here attacking straight up here could wipe out Chewie in a moment. He probably could have finished this fight five minutes ago, if not a bit earlier. Then again, it rather all depends on how Wootlol feels. Because only this length of the game, and again, considering all the losses he suffered, he might still be feeling a bit nervous, a bit less lacking in confidence as to what is going on. As she has until, well, more or less these last moments, rather than putting up a rather vicious game, obviously. They're going, going for the victory point. Still no attempt harassing up there. A bit surprising, actually. And again, there seems to be just this obsession here with the sensible victory point. Getting another anti tank gun now, a bit late for that. A bit late. The enemy is attempting to Just going to speed this up a wit. A wee bit. Ooh, the guys are about to go down. Oh, not the elite ones. But yeah, not really a lot happening, so might as well speed this up a bit. Instead of just talking about how nothing is happening. Again, a bit of a direct uh, assault here with the Panzer was a bit reckless this time around. Close destruction. Finally getting up some minefields. Bunker here done. Machine gun upgraded. That's going to make harassment there less of a solution. Finally, is trying to set up minefields are getting murdered. Minefields, in fact, being set off already. Well, again, no direct sort of... So there's movement, so they're going to tank and joining in. Infantry charging into the minefields. Getting murdered here by the Panzer Fighter Second Flying Rate. Veterans who won. Take aim! Take aim! Jack! Veterans who two! Still no take aim. Can't help but feel a bit disappointed in that. Jack's moving forward to come into fight here from the Veterans 3 anti tank gun, which is not using take aim either. Very disappointed in that. Very disappointed. Veterans 2, though. That's lovely. Increasing rate of fire. Panzer 4 went down. P-47 makes another appearance here. The United States Air Force seems to be rather active across this little village of Zimwaski. And there you go, Chewie surrendering. A loss here for the 3rd Armored Division. A victory for Germany. A victory for the Reich. And a rather spectacular fight there. The later game again, sort of basically Chewie running out of ideas and just sort of trying to slowly, slowly creep us out. He doesn't want to risk too much, I suppose, but at the same time, he becomes a bit too unimaginative, which allows Wootlow to basically just dig in much more handsomely since he was able to survive with better infantry, which in the end allowed him to basically hold out. But again, very interesting fights, very interesting engagements. That bit there, right at the close to the 30-minute mark there with the Panzers and the Tigers, all that getting wiped out. Nasty stuff there, nasty stuff. And in the end, I mean, it was basically both sides losing the armor, but in the end, Wood Lord retaining most of his infantry and then sort of playing a bit better than his opponent in the end, and certainly also holding a bit more territory due to some better defensive tactics and strategies that allowed him to sort of win out here. I mean, in the end, had Wood Lord been a bit more aggressive, or I mean, Chew a bit more sort of better at flanking, sort of attacking other points, trying to draw him out instead of allowing to focus all of his troops here, he probably could have won this, or at least done better. But in the end, he did not, and Wood Lord instead rather got the longer end of the stick here and allowed to basically sort of have a breather ultimately winning in the fight. But overall good use of commands on both sides, good use of commanders, a bit rare to see such thorough usage. Also needs to see the P-47 actually doing something for a change. I would like to see some take aim there going on, I think certainly that could also make a difference for either side. But some nice maneuvers here, some good tactics, some good strategy, but again, for true, the problem was basically the late game, and again, after what happened after that huge battle, it saw so many losses on both sides, he basically couldn't come up with anything. So, there you go, I hope you enjoyed this match, I hope you learned something from it, if you did, want to subscribe to your friends, share it with everybody, if not, you know, send it to me, plan to find some feedback in the comments, this is Imperial Dane saying cheers, and alternate all those damaging kills, but bye!